Welcome back to the channel. We are here just in Munich, Germany with the Q6 e-tron. This is specific one we're looking at today is the SQ6. So we're gonna have a look around the outside, the inside then and take it out for a drive. This is gonna be a very important car for Audi. It's on their new PPE platform in collaboration with Porsche. It's 800 volts, so you can go from 255 worth of range in charging in 10 minutes. There's a lot of good things about this. And also internally, we've got the new digital stage they're talking about that we would have seen at IAA last year. We're gonna have a look around the outside, the inside, and then take it out for a quick spin. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit that like button if you do like the video at the end. Let's get straight into it. So we are here in Munich and we're looking around the outside and the inside of this brand new Audi Q6. And specifically this model is the SQ6. It's the fourth fully electric vehicle from Audi. We would have had the e-tron GT, that beautiful sports coupe. Then we had the Q8, or originally known as the e-tron, and then we had the Q4 e-tron. So this fits right in the middle between the two of them. This is gonna be a good volume seller for them. So let's have a look at it. Based on that PPE platform, which is the same as the Porsche Macan that we're gonna see in a couple of months. And that PPE platform stands for Platform Premium, sorry, Premium Platform Electric. Those beautiful lights at the front, you can see they're LED matrix and there's a 122 sections between it. And depending on them, and we're gonna have a look over at that demo on the far side of the room, just to see the different types of signatures. There's six signatures that you can go for and you can pick them through the MMI internally or via the app. There will be other signatures that you'll be able to download, whether that's via subscription or you pay for them, still to be confirmed, but there will be more personalization. You've got this gorgeous front, and it's not that 2D anymore, it's very much a 3D Audi logo, but there's still a bit of depth in it. And you've got this black mask that's going on. So you've got your daytime running light module here, and then in underneath that there, this is your high low beam module. You've got some lots of glass black going on. There's five different color trims, depending on your, whether you go for the base model, whether you go for the S-Line, S-Line blacked out, and then the SQ6, which this one is with that black grill. So sometimes they're body colored, sometimes it's black, sometimes it's silver but I think it looks great. What do you think? Let me know in the comments of the Q6. Uh, let's have a look at the hazard lights from the front. Uh, go this side and then just jump into it. You can see what they look like. And you can see where they're actually, that top line of pixels either side are when the hazard lights and it's sequential as well. Let's go back in and open up the frunk because it's the first time a Volkswagen Group. Uh, sorry, it's not the first time actually. We would have had a frunk in the e-tron GT. So because we're not on that MEB platform anymore, we're on that PPE platform. You now have a frunk inside here and it's a good decent side one as well. And this is the all wheel drive version. So it's not like it's going to be smaller. So frunk wise, it's 64 liters. You can see they're a really good size. Two latches. Good thunk. Size-wise, just so you understand what, where we're going and what we're looking at with regards to how big is the Q6 e-tron. So let me go through what we were looking at. It's 4.7 meters long. It's 20 centimeters longer than a Q4, but 13 centimeters shorter than a Q8. The interesting thing is, versus the Q8, it's actually got the same wheelbase which is around 2.8 meters long. Based on that 100 volt architecture, um, sorry, 800 volt architecture, got some gorgeous creases down over those wheel arches, this body colored wheel arch here, you get 18s, 19s, 20s, and 21s, and they have a number of different variations with regards to how aero they are. Large Audi gloss black on the top with that indicator built in, retractable, that body colored, all the way up then to that matte black. And then you've got your gloss B pillar. And like we've seen on other Audis recently, the Audi and then the actual, what we're at. This is the SQ6 e-tron. Gloss black windowsill. And then this large window at the back as well. That gloss black roof line, just bringing it down into the rack so you can see it's very deceptive with regards to the actual height of it. And underneath then you've got body color along the bottom and you've got that glass black panel across the two doors, and you've got the e-tron embossed into it here. Normal door handles. And then on this side, which is the passenger side here in Europe, and it's gonna open up for me, 
and this is just AC on the rear left hand side, but then when you go around to the other side, you just gently give it a nudge and it'll close for you. And then on the other side, you've got your DC. I was thinking about it, and it pops it open. So AC, a standard, comes at 11 kilowatt, and then uh, it will be optional 22 kilowatt over there update. And then DC, this is where we start to get the benefit of that 800 volt architecture. You're looking at up to 270 kilowatts on the DC side of things. It's a 94.9 kilowatt hour NCA battery. There will also be, um, 100, 100, that's a 100, this one today is a 100 kilowatt hour with a 90, 4.9 usable, and then there will be an 83 kilowatt hour battery as well. It's a lithium ion NMC battery with prismatic cells. So 10 to 80% in 21 minutes, and as I said, 255 kilometers in 10 minutes with those dual charging ports. Just so if you go to somewhere that you don't know where the charger is, you're always gonna have the AC option on either side. It's gonna have two motors, the Q 655 has a 375 horsepower, and then you can get a 20 horsepower boost under six seconds, zero to 100. This SQ6 that we're looking at here today is 483 horsepower with a 20 horsepower boost and zero to 100 in 4.5 seconds. Standard will become as rear wheel drive, not at the moment because we're quattro on both models. So it is all wheel drive. And on this battery, it's given up to 625 kilometer range. You've got that shark fin glass black area at the back. You've got that high level brake lamp in underneath, large window wiper, nice Audi again. And you've got the coast to coast. And you also have 60 OLED light sections at the back here per section. So 120 here and they've broken it nicely so that it actually broken on the scene. And this can dictate as to what kind of light signatures you're getting. We're gonna have a look at these in a second. So these can again change with the actual way that you're looking at it. I'll go to the lights here now so that you can see exactly what we're talking about. World premiere of these dynamic lighting. So it kind of shimmers and sparkles. And because you've got so many of them either side, there is the brightness is there, and it has that coast to coast, very much like the e-tron GT. And you can see here, again, different types. They've used LED matrix in the front, just because they're brighter, and the OLED in the rear, that they can change the actual shape of what's in underneath here. I think this is gonna be really distinctive on the road. Back to the actual Q6 and the practicality of it. You have, a really good size boot. Over 500 liters, 524 liters if I'm not mistaken. You've got a 40, 20, 40 split. Optional air suspension. And you can see here, you can raise and lower the level of the actual car to get stuff in. A large subfloor in underneath here as well. This one has that B&O subwoofer in the boot. Your charging cables. And you can the ability to drop down the seats that are very easy, and you can see how practical it is back there. Some lights, some tie-up points. And the Q6 also has the ability of towing up to 2,400 kgs. We've got these gorgeous Q6 seats. I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat, and then we're gonna have a, see what kind of a space is inside in it. We put up the seat as well one take. So a really serious thunk. You've got the B&O speaker built into the light here, built into the door, sorry. You've got your uh, electrically actuated door handle. You've got all your lights and your controls down here with your four window wipers. Because this is the S, you're going to have that illuminated. Again, some gorgeous seats. Comes in three different seats, standard, sport, and then sport ultra. These are the sport ultra, electronically adjusted lumbar support, memory function. And as we get in, you're gonna see uh, an augmented reality head-up display. This is what they're calling the digital stage because you've got that MMI curved screen. Let me mute that down. Uh, we've got a pin number. Uh, and then we also have the optional, and we'll look at that in a few minutes, the passenger screen as well. So that's 10.9 inch. This is 11.9 inch for the driver infotainment. And then this is over 14 inches on this side. 
So you can see the very visible steering wheel has the top, flat top, flat bottom, and it has that S. Now you do have some haptics, but they're very much like a pedal. You, you press, so it's good, better than the VW aspect of it. Heated seat, heated steering wheel, your audio, and then on the behind that, then you've got your regenerative braking, one pedal drive all the way up. You've got your lights on this side. You've got your cruise control down here, and then you've got your wipers up here. This is adjustable reach and rake uh, electronically in and out with a little knob down here. That curved screen is gorgeous. And you've got your central widget, you've got your voice assistant. This can be uh, into your actual app store. It's based on an Android system, but with an Audi interface over the top of it. Um, and then you've got your climate all, at, all the time in underneath. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You've got balanced, dynamic, comfort, efficient. This one is at 95% with 441 kilometers. It's been driven a bit harder than normal. Uh, automatic recuperation, and you can change what you see across these things. I like it. I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time with it. Um, yeah. Then you've got your navigation and your... Um, in underneath that, then you've got some vents. You've got some USB type C's, your 12 volt. This is your smokers pack. Now you've got your start stop button, your drive select, your automatic, your hazards, um, and then you've got your volume, your parking camera, your driver assist, your automatic handbrake, and then behind this, then you've got your two, your phone kind of a, into your storage area, and then in underneath there here, you've got your glove box, decent size. Yeah, it's nice. It's got great head height. For me, I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters, and that seat is set for me as well. But let's have a look and see uh, what's it like sitting behind myself. Another thing that I like is they've brought over from the Volkswagen side of the house that ID light. They're calling it something different in Audi land, but uh, it's a status light that whether it's charging, where the voice activation is, it blinks red if there's a hazard. So there's lots of driver assists here too. Let's have a look in the rear with the space, with that same, uh, wheelbase as the Q8, in the rear you've got the window blinds, you've got your B&O speaker, your handle, gorgeous fit and finish, absolutely gorgeous. There's your premium SUV, good size as well. So behind myself, you can see, because of the cutouts in the chair, perfect. Feet in underneath, perfect. And then headroom, and this doesn't have a sunroof, but yeah very happily fit to two and a half of me in the rear of this it's uh if when it, somebody's not sitting in the front of it it doesn't uh, it doesn't have anything actuated which you've got your heated seats in the rear you've got your charging you've got your vents nice let's see if it'll activate when i sit in the passenger seat before we take it out for a drive will the driver oh, we're going to get some action this is an optional extra and let's see about this screen so what can happen is when this screen is on the driver can see it from their angle and so i'm going to have all the different elements i'm going to have the weather channel youtube etc etc so i can go into youtube can i find ev review ireland here in munich very good and so there's the, the channel. So the streaming service, and these can, can work, these are able to work when the driver is driving because he or she, or they can't see the actual screen from sitting over on the other side. So it's kind of a louver effect. But something different for the, you can get the navigation. There are certain things that the passenger can't do, like change the driving modes, etc. And then we can turn off the passenger's display altogether or have a standby mode. We're gonna take it out for a drive. But let me know what you think of the Q6 Audi. Look at me, it's not what you want. You want to be looking at this. Um, yeah, I think it's a lovely proportion. I think some of the styling is gorgeous on it as well. And some really nice design on it, but you know it's an Audi on the road. Jump into the comments and let me know before I take it out for a drive. What's it like driving the Audi Q6 e-tron? We've got a couple of different things going on, so we're going to cover it today, but it's on the optional air suspension. So first of all, you really can 
feel that it's it's taken a level and depending on the mode that you're in and the mode selection is done on the actual center console that is my assist because i said the word we won't say the word of the brand again um but it's got a nice feel to it the steering wheel is a nice weight this is in the balanced mode so there's a couple of different drive modes balanced dynamic comfort efficiency and off-road and with that optional air suspension you're getting that off-road option as well um but balanced it used to be i think it was eco i think was the name of the terminology and people thought it was to do with um, or there was a different name on it if you know jump into the comments and let me know and it's got a nice not too imposing sound in the balance side of things but visibility really good wing mirrors and we've got the blind spot detection Acceleration is good in the balance mode. Seats are gorgeous. They're really nicely bolstered either side. And you can see here, even though it's such a large car, with that optional air suspension, it's really taken things into account. Now, let's turn things into dynamic. And so straight away, it starts to hunker down on the road. The steering wheel weights up. It's not a straight loop, this. I've got uh, my colleague here from Audi beside me that you can't see on camera. I don't try not to make him seasick with the forward and back. But now that we're in dynamic mode, I really want to see up on the straight what that uh, takeoff is like. And so there's a car, another car in front of me, and I'm going to let that car go ahead of me and then uh, see what it's like on that initial acceleration. And I think that part, the other car is doing the exact same thing. You've got that louder internal um, audio as well to let you know what you're doing. Okay, let's have a little look. As much as there's a road and a track painted on here, I'm going to see what it's like in straight line. Launch mode. Oh. In dynamic. Foot on the brake. Foot on the accelerator. I did this before in an e-tron gt and does it does it let me know that it's engaged or did i engage it correctly there so foot on the brake yeah. foot full on the accelerator yeah and then lift the brake and put it okay yeah that does have launch mode um same as it's oh that's powerful with that quattro my goodness And the other car in front of us is having a little look and think about what's going on. Will I overtake? I think so. And so with the indicator, with that ID light internally, I'll actually see if it pulls it up on the other camera on this view. When I indicate left, you can see it indicates up here on the dash. You might, might not see it on the camera. Um, but we will have this again on the channel. Yeah, that was a good sense of acceleration. Uh, serious horsepower we've talked about the difference in it as well this model that we have here is the sq6 thank you very much okay let's see about comfort and then everything starts to be a bit more uh, loose but a much more of a, a relaxed drive the steering wheel feels a lot easier the acceleration mapping on the uh, the pedal oh yeah that's lovely Brakes are good. We found that out there after the, and it's a, with the regenerative brake. And so you've got the pedals on the, on the screen. It's like an open kind of a, like a nearly like a battery indicator. Um, and then there's different, it fills it up one, two, and three. So um, it, there is freewheel mode. So if I take my foot off the accelerator, it will let you cruise. And then stage one brings you a bit more. Stage two, and then you can bring it into D mode, sorry, B mode. And then when I take my foot off the accelerator, it brings me to a complete stop. So real one pedal driving, which is nice to see. Some talk, some brands talk about one pedal driving, but this one actually has one pedal driving. So you've got that recuperation. Yeah, that steering wheel is nice as well. Just around the track today, so I need to get it out on the roads, need to get it out on the Irish roads to see what it's like. Right hand drive, see if the dynamics change in it. But yeah, the Q6, it drives well. It doesn't feel too heavy. And I think that optional air suspension, I think is definitely something you should go for. That's my look around the outside and the inside of the Audi Q6 e-tron. 
they're onto a winner here. They've upgraded their charging, they've upgraded the range, they've put a new battery into us. It's about performance, it's about technology, the fit, the finish, it's all Audi. Those four rings are starting to bring it to the competition levels because it's kind of sitting in a space where there isn't a lot of competition. You might have Mercedes-Benz, you might have BMW, Polestar 4, so there's, it's not, they don't have it to themselves, but I think they've done a phenomenal job. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so, hit the like button and let me know what you think. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy that video too.